Welcome to our webinar, the six of the Rescale Solutions live webinar series, featuring, featuring hands-on demonstrations of the top science and engineering applications on Rescale. Uh, my name is Jolie Hales and I will be your moderator. I'm with Rescale and today's focus is on how to craft solutions with Cradle CFD on Rescale. And let's switch my slide here. Go, go, gadget slide. So we also wanted to make you aware, if you know any business or technology leaders out there who may be hesitant to move to cloud HPC, even in part, if they're doing a hybrid, maybe they're afraid of the risks that might come with it. Uh, we just rolled out a new interface that addresses a lot of those risks and it gives leaders that control and that transparency along with our highest security so that they can be confident taking that leap. And we do have a webinar on that very subject a week from today on July 22nd, and that one will be at 10 a.m. And it will also feature a discussion with Addison Snell. And those of you who follow HPC at all probably recognize his name. He is a well-respected HPC analyst from Intersect 360, and he will be there to answer questions and talk to us about those risks. So feel free to invite anybody you can think of might be interested in that, and that'll be next week. You can find registration information on rescale.com and also on any of our social channels. Okay, so we do have two presenters lined up for today. Uh, the first is our guest presenter, Jonas, and I'm so sorry, Jonas, I will slaughter your name as I often do, Vergart. Jonas Vergart, who is a product manage, marketing manager at Software Cradle. And a little bit about Jonas, he has a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering from Chalmers University in Sweden and a master's degree in nuclear engineering and management from the University of Tokyo, Japan. And he also has extensive experience at MSC Software in Scandinavia with a wide range of computer-aided engineering software from fluids to structures uh, as a technical specialist and consultant. So he might be working in marketing, but he knows a lot about the engineering side of things as well. He has real-world engineering experience from working in both the automotive and aerospace industries before joining MSC Software. And he's passionate about multi-physics focused CFD and how it will push the frontiers of CFD in the 21st century. So looking forward to hearing from you, Jonas. Thank you for joining us. And then after Jonas, we will have Madhu Velikal from Rescale speak to us. And Madhu is a solutions architect at Rescale. He's based in Chicago, and he has a decade of experience in CFD and HPC systems. Um, he has a Master of Engineering and Energy Systems from UIUC and a Master of Science in Mechanical Engineering from the University at Buffalo. So double master's degrees. That's, that's a cool bragging point, Madhu. Good for you, man. Uh, he has varied interests outside of work and is an avid Arsenal FC fan. And at Rescale, Madhu is excited about the opportunity to enable innovation and and constructive disruption. I like that, constructive disruption in the simulation and HPC communities. So at this time, I will go ahead and turn webinar control over to Jonas from Software Cradle. Thank you very much for the introduction and I will just go through to, to the slides. So the topic, I, I first want to go through the, a little bit about what I will speak with you all today. And uh, they're always nice to have some structure to the, to the presentation. Uh, so I will start with a brief um, company overview of Hexagon and MSC and Software Cradle because we all belong together. And then I will move over to what Software Cradle have in form of CFD solutions. And then we will have a deep dive or like a focus area, which is electronics. So Hexagon, so Software Cradle and MSC Software, which um, Software Cradle belongs to, is a part of a bigger organization called Hexagon Manufacturing Intelligence and Hexagon Group. And uh, Hexagon Manufacturing is a company that focuses on product uh, lifecycle and working uh, to make the factory smarter and to make uh, the process flow and um, the throughput in the factories um, higher. Uh, but I'm not here today to speak about that so much because I'm here to speak about um, from the CAE perspective. So, but Hexagon have both uh, the design and engineering part, which I belong to, but there is also metrology and production software. Uh, but I will stick to the CAE perspective. So, speaking about MSC software, uh, so MSC software 
supply a wide variety of solutions for structural analysis with MSC Master and Mark, multi-body dynamics with the software called Adams, uh, thermal and fluid dynamics with uh, software from Cradle, software Cradle, basically where I'm from. Also acoustic simulation software with Actran and also material modeling software with Digimat. And we also uh, supply model and manufacturing process simulations. So all the products names that I just mentioned, they're, they're also found on Rescale. But I will focus on the CFD part of thing with Software Cradle today. So a, a small briefly hi a brief history about Software Cradle. Uh, I want to mention some of the key features that um, in the history of the company. And uh, Software Cradle was uh, founded in 1984 in Japan uh, and is based off a very famous CFD textbook with almost all the major CFD codes are based on. And uh, Software Cradle have always been about user experience and usability of driving in a pragmatic way, of helping the, um, the engineer to do their tasks. And one thing that uh, we developed that helps this is the first, we were the first to de deliver in 1987 a so-called body-fitted CFD solver that basically allows um, you to create a better CFD model to, to, uh, to fit the CAD geometry. In the 90s, uh, there was two major milestones. The first was that uh, SD Tetra, which is the, um, the SD uh, view um, solver uh, it's the same as just the, the Japanese and the English English name came was released in the all-in-one package you have pre solver and pose uh, and we were the first to, to release a software package on Windows so engineers can use because face it everyone in nowadays or most people nowadays are usually sitting and uh, interacting with um, on the Windows platform. We also, in the same year, uh, released um, a product called Heat Designer, which is an embedded all-in-one solution for thermal simulation for uh, within the CAD si within CAD systems. Around the millennium, we uh, we released a human mannequin thermo regulator model in, in the software. Uh, what this basically means is uh, it's model how humans perceive heat and cooling. So it's great for air conditioning units. So now when it's hot outside. Uh, you can use this in order to, to simulate how a human would perceive uh, the heat from or like the cool from the air conditioning system. So a more recent history. Uh, so 2012, we released something called Heat Pass View, which is a 1D uh, software to visualize how heat flow in systems. Very powerful for electronics. 2016, we were acquired by MSC. And 2017, MSC was acquired by uh, by Hexagon, and that's why we're the uh, quick brief overview of those two companies. 2018, we released um, a next generation multi uh, physics focused code called SE Flow, which is the, basically the um, uh, the next generation um, uh, toolset from so from Software Cradle that will supersede uh, Tetra and Rue codes. And last year we released um, a coupling with Aero Acoustics with uh, another MSC code called Actron, which is the market leading in acoustics. So to create a better solution for Aero Acoustic applications. So that's brief history about some uh, milestones in the company history. So, so what does Cradle CFD solution uh, looks like? So it, it is built on basically two products. So, and with this product, you basically, you take your CAD and you treat the geometry in a different way. So we have here your CAD geometry, here very simple, but uh, you get, the, uh, get the, um, the idea. So we have CAD geometry, we bring it into, for example, the first product, which is the, um, uh, one of our first products called Assistream. Um, and it's a so-called structural mesh tool. And it basically represents the geometry with cubes in, in different ways. They don't need to be perfect cubes, but they can be skewed in, in different ways. But, but there are still cubes like this in a structured way. Uh, and this is very common in the ele electronics industry, architecture, and civil engineering. 
And uh, it's very common to see this in application that demands very huge models because it's very effective to handle large models. The other product that we supply is uh, SVFlow, which I uh, spoke about earlier. And that's, a common, and that's basically, instead of boxing it out with this kind of voxels or with this kind of structured mesh, we have an unstructured mesh. So we try to uh, accurately model the exact shape of the objects uh, that we're simulating. Uh, and that's use um, a little bit more advanced uh, modeling techniques and it's common, uh, commonly used in aeros uh, aerospace, automotive, machinery. And in general, it, um, uh, you, you see it in application that demands um, high accuracy. And with these, uh, then you, we also bundle these two products with uh, our post processor, which is uh, for powerful visualization. And all the visual, all the graphics you will see in, in form of pictures in this presentation comes from this uh, post-processor. Uh, because in the end of the day, you need to see the results that come out of these solvers. So as we speak about um, uh, the cloud, we have a great source for HPC. And the, and the great thing about CFD in general is that it scales very well onto uh, it do very well on these platforms because it's have a great potential of parallelization. So uh, software cradles, so for example, SC Stream have a near linear speed up ratio. So in this graph, so let me explain the graph a little bit. So we see the degree of parallelism. That is basically how many cores we have. And the speed up ratio is if we double the amount of uh, cores, we see how much less time uh, does it take to solve the simulation? So in this case, if we have eight uh, cores, we will uh, perfect in the perfect world, we, it will run eight times faster. But due to overhead and so on, that is not always the, tr uh, the truth. Uh, and in this case, we see a near linear um, a parallelization of the office stream. And here we see the Colossus uh, Colosseum model of uh, roughly uh, 73 million uh, CFD cells. So these small cubes. And then we have SFLOW, which also have a near linear uh, parallelization scheme. And uh, here we see two other like common example, one uh, from the automotive industry. And um, one might ask, why should I use SSTREAM if both of them have a speed up ratio um, uh, and SFLOW have a almost linear one? that much more close to the ideal. However, one should recognize that the actual wall time, the time it takes from that you submit the job until you get the result files for the Colosseum in this case and the standard car and um, the fan here, it's roughly the same. So, and one can see that the Colosseum model is much, much uh, bigger in that sense. Uh, software Cradle, you can find us in many different industries, and here we can see a few, but today I would like to focus on electronics uh, going forward. So, again, uh, Software Cradle is all about prag pragmatism and getting results quickly, not only solver speed and accuracy, but also like the overall experience of getting from, from CAD to report as quickly as possible. And uh, uh, we, we focus a lot on the meshing, the solver speed, of course, uh, but we are great at things like thermal management of, um, uh, of electronic systems. Uh, we are also uh, best in class when it comes to motion, so things that are moving within the simulation. Um, that is handled both in both codes, both as a stream and as a flow. Uh, and we can also link our solvers in, uh, to the other solvers within MSC in order to create multi core simulation with multi physics. So we can take structure and who in, in structure that interact with the fluids in the FSI applications. And here we see a, a, a small subset of our great customers. So you can see that uh, these customers are, uh, they represent the Japanese market. So uh, and they are primarily within the automotive and electronics industry. Uh, and here we can find na names such as Panasonic, Hitachi, Sony, Sharp, Canon, Toshiba, uh, Nikon, Fujitsu, and so on. Uh, so we have a great set of customers. 
So, so deep diving into electro, uh, the electronics part. So what is a normal workflow in the electronics? Uh, so I'm not sure that all the attendees are fam super familiar with just um, the electronics industry. Uh, however, when, when the workflow is usually like this, and it's fairly similar to uh, other application as well. So first we have a PCB uh, conceptual simulation or design process that usually the CAE engineer is, is involved with, that quick uh, iterative designs. Uh, however, as the product matures and you get ECAD and MCAD, so ECAD is the electronic CAD, like the wirings on the board, and MCAD is basically the mechanical CAD, which is the casings and so on. Uh, and when those start to, to come from design, you take them and put them into the, the system model. So is this dream in this case, which is, is most commonly used in electronics. Uh, basically, you bring it in and then you work on the CAD level. You don't need to facet everything. You, you bring it in, you set like this part, uh, uh, dissipate this much heat, this chipset, and so on, uh, and set all the boundary conditions. And then we need to discretize the FE model or the, the CFD model. Um, and that means that we need to, we need to mesh it. And because of the voxel meshing approach, it's near instant. In this case, uh, we have a small graphic card. We speak about seconds of meshing it. And then we pass it on to the solver. And the solving uh, solves the thermal, uh, thermal problem. So we, we simulate both fluid and the structure at the same time. And then we look upon the results uh, and look at fringe plots and see how the air is moving and so on. But then there's, um, we have developed a, a rich set of tools that help you understand what it actually means. So like, how is the heat moving through the system? And then we have identified something that we need to change or that it's not working as it should. And then we do a design change and then we iterate. And uh, as I said before, we, to some extent, we are kind of pragmatic in the way that we need to work. So it's very important from, from CAD to report. And um, a lot of time in CFD is usually spent cleaning up models. So you try to create a perfect representation of the geometry. We try to idealize it. Uh, we have went another approach and tried to use um, uh, the structural mesh in order to remove all form of CAD process. So here we have a, a server tower, a uh, cooling uh, server tower. Uh, it consists of around 5,000 parts, and we see it here to the right. And there was no cleanup needed. So instead of needing the engineer needing to spe spend a lot of time cleaning this up, so in the previous solution that this customer used, they, they needed to have six days from CAD to report, but with the uh, SA stream, we could reduce that in half to two and a half days. And, uh, and the main thing is that we have up to 80% less manual processing of uh, the geometry cleanup. So and then we have build our model and we we have uh, and we want we have solved it and we want to look at the results and then we have the normal fringe plot of CFD tools and then you look at this and say like yeah where is the heat going so it requires a lot of experience from the CA engineer to understand how the how the heat is moving and uh, this is open for uh, interpretation and uh, basically. In order to move away from this, we have developed the heat path view tool, which is easy and quantifiable. Basically, what we see here is how heat travels from one part to another. And then when we track that, we basically see the heat dissipation and if it, should, if it works as it should. Um, and then we have scalability. So CFD, uh, I would like to show you two, two examples where, where scale actually is quite important. So the first one is from a company, Hirata in Japan, that works with a manufacturing of, um, of, uh, silic uh, of ship manufacturing. So basically they, they make machines that handles the silicon wafer in the silicon uh, in the ship uh, manufacturing process. So it basically takes the wafers and move it around. And because the wafers are very sensitive to dust and contaminants, it's very important to keep it very clean. And um, so they use our tools in order to, to do this kind of simulation of this large machine, electronics machines. And there's no problem handling things like moving parts within. So you can basically see the arms, how it moves around. 
Another great customer of ours is Nikon, which I, I picked up from the shark uh, before. And basically they work with a lot of different applications, but one of the applications is they also work with um, uh, ship manufacturing. Uh, and they also work with etching of um, the silicon wafers. And we see that they goes to one of the larger models that we see. And um, it, it, they are very interested in the overall performance of such a large machine and how all components interact with each other because it's very important to see the heat so that they can keep this insane uh, accuracy of the, of the etching. So our sol solver basically helped them reach the, uh, the four, uh, to go under the 40 nanometer boundary uh, for the etching process. And uh, a couple of years ago, they were at uh, 500 million uh, CFD cells in one model, uh, and they're pushing the boundaries of the tool in order to go higher. And uh, today they have bigger models than this. Another example of uh, turnaround times so from CAD report is the one from Analog Way. I'm not sure how well this uh, animation plays, but basically we can see inside that the airflow through this huge um, server uh, that, that handles this huge resolution videos, this playback, and it, they basically created a solution with the highest resolution video display in the history of Times Square. So it's quite an achievement to have this huge uh, video projection. And uh, in order to do so, they have a, they needed to dissipate a lot of heat in this system. So they needed to dissipate around 2.2 kilowatts of heat uh, that comes from the different electronic components, such as uh, CPUs and uh, PCBs and all the different components uh, uh, soldered to these. And uh, it's very important with turnaround time. And uh, SC Stream basically helped them in order to, uh, to, to go from CAD to report as quickly as possible by removing all the CAD cleaning uh, uh, parts. And also due to the efficiency uh, of the solver, they could solve this problem with a mere 20 core overnight. And um, one can see how scaling this um, on the HPC side up, you can get results much quicker uh, with the cloud. So in their sen uh, so in their case, they had six type of simula uh, three types of uh, simulation, and they had a result with a with a finished report written in one week from the time that they received the data. So a little bit about cloud economics. So we have the traditional purchase. So you buy the software and the hardware, and then you 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 pay up front. Uh, the and it doesn't change over time. So you're stuck with the hardware and you, you, you have the, the software that you already purchased. So this is great for regular like workloads that you know what's happening and normal work rates. Uh, uh, but there is a slow ramp up, uh, ramp up and, um, and also it's hard to, to, to meet demands when they change. And then you have a, a consumption-based purchase with uh, low starting price and then then you basically pay as you go. Uh, and then it's great for bursts. So in the sense of one of uh, our great customers in France, I'm also sorry for butchering the name of uh, Farquet. Uh, I'm very uh, bad, at, my, my French is not very good. But they, they work in the clean room industry. So for example, in the, they make the H2X system and uh, analyze um, the flows uh, inside rooms that is needed in, for example, the wafer manufacturing. And in this uh, small case, we see an operation room. Uh, but basically, they work with clean rooms and um, they have a little bit more information on their homepage if you're interested. So you can go and check that out. But, uh, and then what happens? So they have their HPC setup, they have their, their software, and what happens when they get um, commission of an industrial plant. So then they basically can scale up to the cloud very quickly and pay as you go. And they did so with read scale uh, and cradle. And in this case, they had a, basically a, a huge plant that they needed to cover. And they, their, their, um, their re simulation requirements went up uh, dramatically. And this is a company that work in nuclear, medical, and 
microelectronics application. So, uh, and it's very important for their customers, which basically buy the clean room, uh, to feel safe and protected in, in the environment and also make sure that their products such as the silicon wafers and, and similar are protected. So I thank you very much for, for this uh, possibility to do this presentation and I will hand it back to Rescale. Awesome, thank you so much, Jonas. Uh, that high no resolution problem. video display in Square is pretty cool. I thought that was fascinating. Yeah. So I appreciate it. And I, I'm gonna turn the time over now to Madhu. It looks like we do have some questions coming in, so we will answer those. Jonas, if you don't mind hanging around, we will answer those at the end of this webinar. Make sure that we get everybody's. Perfect. Um, thanks for the nice introduction. Hello, everyone. My name is uh, Madhu Vallakal. I'm a solutions architect with Rescale. And today we will be learning about like what Rescale is and what Rescale does and how we can successfully run a cradle CFD job on the platform. Assume you are a cradle CFD user like who wants to run like SC stream, SC floor, SC tetra applications on the cloud. So you know the application in and out, but you may or may not be aware of all the inter intricacies of running it on the cloud. So Rescale as a platform delivers this total HPC experience for engineers and users who are more focused on running the Cradle CFD applications in simple steps like selecting the input files, selecting the right software and the hardware, and then just submit the job, get the results, do the post-processing. So the workflow is pretty streamlined in order to provide like a better experience for the users. The Rescale platform as such, being in the middle between the applications and the infrastructure connects both these major technological stack to provide like one streamlined performance. If you are used to running on HPC on the using like an on-prem data center, you may be wondering like, why cloud? Why the need to move everything that's been running fine to the cloud. But if you are also aware of managing and operating a HPC system, you understand the complexities of it, right? So the slide that's shown here just describes how complex it is to run a HPC system. And each of these box represents like multiple choices and each choice has an opportunity cost to it. And also, integrating all these boxes requires like multiple tools, sometimes they make consulting services, and it definitely introduces a lot of unknown challenges that may be really daunting for the customers. So with Rescale, the HPC system is made as a turnkey solution, right? So the blue boxes that you see here are Rescale managed. And Rescale manages this by integrating 30 plus middleware software and tool sets into just one seamless platform. And the platform is built for high flexibility and optimization, as Jonas mentioned, in a paper use model. By Using the Rescale platform, the customers can focus on their core competencies, which are like product development and product design, right? So at the end of the day, the engineers and scientists who are working on HPC simulations are innovators or researchers or scientists. Their major objective is to push the innovation and the limit in product development. And Rescale enables this by managing the HPC system and ecosystem for them. And by focusing on the core competencies, the customers and organizations can achieve competitive advantage in the market. Outside of that value proposition, you know, HPC being a turnkey solution, there are other multiple, you know, value add-ons for the rescale platform. 
first, your job every single time that you run on the platform is cost, time, and resource optimized. And second, if you have an on-prem infrastructure, your users will typically run jobs in a sequential manner based on some resource or policy constraint, either the projects or have budget limitations or core hour limitations, or the users are limited to run like multiple jobs at the time. And the hardware that you have may be generic for the overall organization. Your structural department or your electronics department and your CFD department may all be using the same set of hardware. But with Rescale and the cloud infrastructure, you get virtually unlimited scale, which means your compute, you can compute as big as you want it, and when you want it. There's no limitation in terms of the scale. So by embracing the elasticity of cloud, you are enabling time and cost savings every single time. And you can also choose the right tool for your job and does not have to follow the one size fits all approach. For example, on this slide, you can select a high memory hardware for SE stream workflows. And at the same time, you can select the compute optimized architecture for your C-flow workflows. By providing this solution, Rescale enables like flexibility and scalability, which in turn helps the organizations to get like faster results, you know, get answers quicker, and provide market access much more faster than their competitors. So doubling down or stressing more on my point about selecting the right hardware for the right problem, what we have here on the left is performance metrics from an SEC, SEC stream job that I ran on using like three different hard, hardware architectures. So Onyx represents like an older hardware architecture where Luna represents the latest. We can see that with better architecture, the performance gets better. Right. At the same time, on the right, we have same Onyx and the Luna architectures and Emerald. With advances in hardware architectures, we get the ability to compute more in a single node, which also gives us the ability to select the right hardware architecture for the problem. So by working with the true multi-cloud platform like Rescale, you get an unparalleled user experience and the ultimate choice of selecting the right tools for your problem. With that, we can now go and see how to run a SC stream job on the Rescale platform. You can start by typing rescale.com. So once you're on the homepage, you can either use a sign up link or if you have an existing credential, you can use it to log in. Once you're logged in, you will be presented with the jobs page as seen here. Now let's walk through how to submit a job using the input files that I have on the cloud on the platform. So in order to do that, click on the new job tab here. So this gives us the job setting page. As mentioned before, the workflow is given on the left. So it follows the input, the software settings, the hardware. And if you have any post-processing scripts, you can add them to the bad job. If not, just review the settings that we have so far and then submit the job. You can also name your job for reference. In order to input your files, you can either do it from your cloud storage or from your computer. Since I have my files on the cloud storage, I'm going to click on the Add from Cloud Storage link. That will bring up the files that I have on the cloud storage. Select the files that are required, 
once done click add selected files then you can move on to the next page by clicking here or here so on the software page what we see here is the list of cradle cfd software applications that we have on the platform we can select the appropriate software for example for this case i'll be selecting sc stream you can also see that there are different versions available for sc stream if you like to have a version that does not exist or you don't you do not see it here we can get that onboarded as part of the process once the version is selected you can see here the input files we selected from our previous page are just populated here for your reference and in the command window the commands that are required to run the sc stream job are preloaded so the user just have to come in and select the appropriate input file for their job and you can also see that once the input file is selected and if it exists in the same page the color turns green just to provide a visual confirmation for the user moving on to the license options we have multiple options here you can use an on demand license what it basically does is you know you are buying license for cradle cfd from prescale and there's a license cost to it which are given here but if you have an existing license for cradle cfd or msc you can get that configured to be able to use on the platform and if you are an existing user of msc's token based one license we can have that configured as well to be able to run it on the platform so for this run i'm going to select the on demand license option once the license is selected we can move on to the hardware settings page just stressing about the right choice of tools for the problem so what we have is the list of hardware architecture code types that we have on the platform and this represents the choice from multi cloud providers and also like multi architectures for example on the top we have hardware that represent haswell cascade lake iv bridge sky lake and also amd on the platform okay scroll all the way down this gives an exhaustive list of what you could run on on the platform if your problem is memory constraints we do have like really high memory app, uh, core types and there is also core types with like more storage uh, that are available on the platform for this run i'm going to select the onyx core type once the choice is selected here you can change the number of cores that you want your jobs on and change the wall temp here so once you're satisfied with that you can move on to the post processing step since i don't have any so i'm going to skip this but if you have in the future you can make use of this page as well finally at the review page it just gives a summary of your job setting so far the name of the input files the analysis type and the hardware that you're going to run if you're satisfied you can move on and click submit once the job is submitted once the job is submitted let me just open up yeah so once the job is submitted it's going to go through a different stages the input files are validated the cluster gets started once the cluster is started the job is run when the job is finished all the files are uploaded back to the storage once that is done the cluster is stopped and while the job is running you can see in the log files what's happening with that particular job as part of the status page itself once the job is finished you can move on to the results tab where you'll have an option to select any result file that you want to download to a local machine for visualization or you can also see the log files 
to check the residuals or the conversions of the simulation that you ran. You can select all the files and have them downloaded, or you can just select one file to have them downloaded to a local machine. If you just want to run the same job with the same settings on the input files, you can have this, you can make use of this clone feature, which will retain every setting, and then you can just come back and resubmit the job. If you like to do post processing on the platform using the job that you just ran, we have the virtual desktop interfaces as seen here. So you need to click on the desktop. You can launch a new desktop by clicking new custom desktop. Once you are in this page, as seen on the compute, we have different hardware that are available for interactive desktops. So I'm going to select a desktop with GPUs in it. Once that is selected, I go back and select my software, configure the license options, make sure the version that I want is loaded here. And if you scroll all the way down, you can actually add the job that you just ran to the desktop. So what this does is like when the desktop is, is, is being provisioned, your input and the output files will be loaded onto that virtual desktop. With that, you can click on launch and select the wall time that you want this desktop for and then click launch. I am showing now here a desktop that I started earlier. So the desktop launch happens around like, it takes around 10 minutes from launch to, to be able to get connected and the software gets added. Once you see the software is attached, you can click on connect, which will bring us to this interactive virtual desktop. So what we have here is a SE post. I got it preloaded and I have like loaded like a post processing file onto an interactive desktop. In order to see the animation, I just click on the animation that will show the post processing that I'm doing it for this model that I just ran. With this, we just saw like two different workflows of how to run Cradle CFD on the rescale platform. One is the basic batch job submission. The next is the post-processing that you can do on the platform using virtual desktops. But if you're a business leader or a business manager, at the end of the day, you understand Rescale is a really nice solution, but businesses need much more controls on access, cost, and security. And Rescale understands that with the current on-prem setup, getting the right information for you as a business leader may be obstructed by various different functions within an organization. Right? So Rescale came up with Rescale Insight, which is kind of the answer that you have been looking for to get like much more detailed information about HPC's operations in a transparent manner. So Rescale Insight is the first HPC analytics platform designed for business leaders who can get an overview about the economics, the security, and the overall organizations on the platform itself. And if you'd like to learn more about this, we have an exciting webinar coming up next week. So please do sign up where we have like leaders from the industry talk about Rescale Insight and how it can help your organization. One of the other major strengths for Rescale is our partners. 
with an ISV partner like MSC, we are able to deliver HPC solutions for MSC's customers. In order to accelerate this adoption of MSC software on the Rescale platform, we have launched a program where uh, customers can get up to like $10,000 in hardware credits to run MSC software on the Rescale platform. And if you're interested, if you'd like to learn more about this and the application process for this one, uh, please get in touch with us or you can visit the link that's shown here. Last but not least, we have an awesome, exciting YouTube channel where all the webinars and some informational videos are loaded, uploaded. Please feel free to subscribe to those two videos and watch it when you have free time. With that, I'd like to thank everyone for the time. I'm happy to answer any questions if you have any. Thank awesome, you. thank you so much, Madhu, appreciate that. Um, it looks like we do have some questions that have come in. This one might actually be for you, Jonas. Um, it came in while you were presenting. Uh, let's yes, see I will here. try my best. Eh? It says, if I have models in ANSYS, Icepack, or Mentor, Flowtherm, slash hyperlinks, do I need to create those models in Cradle? Uh, it depends of uh, a little bit of how they are set up, but, but in general, you need to recreate them in our tool. Uh, so you, you need to go back to creating them from CAD. Gotcha. But, but it, to some extent, there's also great uh, options for automa uh, automa to automize such uh, if, if there's a, like a long history or a legacy that we need to take care of. Uh, you want to automize a lot of these kind of work. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Um, we have a few more. Let's see. Jonathan asks, how does, I think this is one is for you, Madhu, how does licensing work? And can I use my own licenses I already have? Sure. Yeah. So licensing, we have multiple options. Um, you can use your own. Um, either Rescale can host it for you, or we can get it connected to your own from license server. Uh, but in terms of Cradle CFD, we also have like an on-demand license where you can purchase it per use from these kids. Okay. Um, oh, another one just popped in here. This is uh, from Maria. Uh, is there a limitation on the number of jobs per user? I think that's for no, you. No, there are no limitations. There are no limitations on the number of jobs per user, but we do have some mechanisms in place which will restrict or like, which will emulate the behavior that you want in order to control cost as an organization. Okay, and it looks like we've got one more. Um, this one is from Jeff. Is there a way to manage budgets and projects from the portal? Yes. So that's where we have this awesome new feature called Rescale Insight. I would strongly encourage you to sign up for the webinar next week uh, to have more answers on how to control budgets and projects. But in general, yes, we do have those mechanisms in place. If you're interested, please do get in touch with us. Great. It looks like we've reached the end of our webinar. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. And just a reminder again that our next webinar is on July 22nd, a week from today, and that will be with HPC analyst Addison Snell talking about the risks of HPC management and how to overcome them. And you can find registration on rescale.com or on our social media sites. Again, thank you so much for joining us and stay safe out there.